I'm teaching you today how to do the nerve stimulator guided GTRT line sciatic nerve block. The sciatic nerve supplies the major part of the distal lower leg, ankle and foot. This picture of the dermatomes of the lower leg shows the nerve supplying sensation to the skin. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh supplies sensation to skin on the posterior aspect of the upper leg as well as on the upper quarter of the calf. The saphenous nerve supplies sensation to the skin on the medial side of the lower leg as well as to the medial ankle joint capsule. The sciatic nerve in turn supplies sensation to all the other skin and it also supplies all of the lower leg deep tissues including muscle and bone. In the upper leg the sciatic nerve also supplies the posterior knee joint capsule and the posterior hip joint capsule with sensation. This biggest nerve of the body is about 50 centimeters long and it can be blocked at one centimeter intervals in innumerable ways from every possible direction. There are however only three groups of sciatic nerve blocks based upon the accompanying nerves that get blocked with the sciatic nerve. The first group are the distal sciatic nerve blocks which all exclude blocking the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The second group are proximal sciatic nerve blocks performed at the GTIT line or slightly proximal to that. They all do block the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh together with the sciatic nerve block. The final group is the very proximal sciatic nerve blocks. This was described by Mansu and is also known as the parasacral sciatic nerve block. In addition, it blocks the superior and inferior gluteal nerves supplying all of the buttock muscles as well as the skin nerves to the buttock. The GTIT line block is one of the basic four nerve stimulator guided blocks that all regional anesthesiologists should master. Although the block needle can often be guided by ultrasound imaging at the GTIT line, ultrasound guidance becomes impossible when the nerve lies 6 to 16 centimeters deep and becomes invisible. Then one's only resort is using nerve stimulator guidance and surface landmarks if one needs to perform a proximal sciatic nerve block. This is also the best landmark based approach to the sciatic nerve as it is simple and relies only on bony reference points that are not affected by obesity. This technique has also been called the lithotomy block or the red sciatic nerve block. See these images over here. I recommend, however, calling it the GTI sciatic block. The GTI sciatic nerve block is, in my experience, also the best site for placement of sciatic perineural catheters. First flex the hip joint with the patient in the lateral position and the block side upwards. A supine position can also be used supporting the legs in lithotomy in order to flex the hip, as is being done with this child under anesthesia. So let me show you the landmarks. Uh, the most lateral bone you can find in the body is the greater trochanter and it's like a big round bulge and there it is. Call it GT. The other landmark is IT ischial tuberosity. If you sit on a hard wooden bench it's the lowest bone of the torso and it's the part of the bone that will carry your weight on the hard wooden bench. Feel it from below so there it is. So that is ischial tuberosity. Join these two. That will give you the axis on which you work. For most thin patients, the midpoint is the right point to aim at the sciatic nerve. But if you have a bigger patient where the skin marking is displaced to lateral by a bit of a skin saddlebag, or that marking is displaced distal by saggy skin, then just feel for the bony trough. My finger here is in a trough, there's bone to medial, there's bone to lateral. So that is the axis. And in this case, it coincides with the midpoint. So if you're going to use a nerve stimulator technique, you can insert your needle straight there, and you're aiming at a nerve, something about the size of my thumb. The human being has a bigger sciatic nerve than a cow. You can probably guess that the sciatic nerve is dominantly sensory, and that is so. It's about 80% sensory, only 20% motor. So it's not unusual wherever you do this block 
you prod the needle, the nerve with your needle, you push into it, onto it, you don't get a twitch. The reason is you're just messing with sensory fascicles. You've got to keep exploring or penetrating till you find a motor fascicle. Here comes a little mosquito bite. I'm going to introduce my needle through flesh. Notice how my hand is braced, so I've got a steady hand on the needle. I'm getting a bit of twitching under my fingers here. So that suggests I'm still in maximus gluteus, so I'm still superficial to sciatic, so I can keep advancing. And I've gone straight into um, calf muscles. Now it's just a question of adjusting until I can get a twitch 0.5 or less. And I think I'm going to go a little bit too lateral. Let's see if I can get closer to the nerve. There, that seems like a strong twitch. Okay, at the moment he has perception of sensation in his foot. There's a bit of a flicker there. This is 0.46. At this point I'll inject 20 millilitres of drug.